Um, I'm going to be speaking about a dashboard I created a while ago using a Laravel, Vue, and Pusher. Uh, I'm Freek van der Herten. I'm a partner and a developer at an Antwerp uh, company called Spasi. Uh, like many of you, I'm active on Twitter. My handle is Freek Merze. And I have got a blog, merze.be, where I talk about uh, modern PHP and Laravel development. Now, I do uh, a couple of other things as well. I run the uh, local PHP user group in Antwerp together with my buddies, uh, Dries and Frederick. Uh, if you're ever in the vicinity of our beautiful city and want to speak at our user group, let us know. We are looking for speakers of any level and the talks of any length, so get in touch. I also have a, a side project called Odir App, which is a SaaS that can monitor your websites uh, to see if they're up, if they're not containing mixed content. It will send you notifications if there are broken uh, links around. It's yeah, my first uh, SaaS app, which yeah, I launched uh, like a month ago. Um, but my main gig is uh, Spasi. That's, uh, that's my company. It's been around since 2003. We create websites, applications, and web shops. Our team is quite small. We're only seven developers and uh, one manager. And yeah, we specialize in Laravel development. Now, before heading into the wonderful world of dashboards itself, I want to say a few words about open source software. Um, at our company, we create a lot of open source software. And we have a big list on our company website of all the packages that, uh, that we've created. We currently have 160 <laughs> public repositories on GitHub. Uh, our packages have been downloaded now for 9 million times, and they are being downloaded now for 1 million times a month, which is quite nice for a company uh, that is yeah, small of, uh, of size. And we see that creating uh, packages has a lot of uh, benefits for us. Of course, we learn a lot by just yeah, solving the problem the, the package tries to tackle. Um, we have to write quality documentation, because without documentation, nobody will know how to use our stuff. We have to uh, write uh, very good tests, because without tests, nobody is going to trust our packages. Um, if you take a look at the code, uh, then I hope you'll conclude that we uh, know our way around PHP and Laravel. And of course, we're also using those packages in our own uh, projects. Um, yeah, and if you're in a place in your company where you can advocate the development of open source software, I highly encourage you to do so because there are really nothing but uh, benefits. Now, I get asked a lot how does our company manage uh, so creating and maintaining so much open source software. Um, that's really a talk of its own, but I have blogged about that, and that's that uh, last link on, uh, on the slide here. Now, all those packages, I should have mentioned that, they are not entirely free. There's a special license on them called Postcardware. And if any of our stuff makes it into your production environment, you are required to send us a postcard. Now, this is, uh, this is our address. Currently missing 9 million postcards. So, <laughs> <laughs> so get your license in order. We, um, yeah, we have a wall, a magnetic wall, in our office where every uh, postcard uh, gets its place. Now, let's turn around in our office. This is our actual office. And what you see there on the other side of the wall is a dashboard. Let's step in a little bit closer. And there we are. That's our dashboard. Now, before um, taking a technical dive into it, let's first uh, discuss what's, what's being displayed here. Now, the first tile here is uh, yeah, a Twitter tile. It uh, shows in real time uh, each tweet uh, where our company is, uh, is mentioned in. Now, the next one is um, our uh, cal calendar tile. It shows uh, yeah, all the events that are important for our company. Each member of our team is quite passionate about music, so we want to know which music is playing in our office, and that tile displays that. Here, it's, yeah, we were listening to an excellent number by Sonic Youth. 
This style really needs no explanation. That's just the weather and the time. And you can see that uh, I took uh, this screenshot on a particularly hot day in the summer. It was 27 degrees at uh, half past 10, so that was nice. Um, I've talked a little bit about our open source stuff. We're quite proud of that, so we display some statistics of, uh, of the downloads. Uh, these numbers we fetch via the Packagist API. I, I call this one the, the happy tile. This is the unhappy tile, so it shows how many issues and, and PRs uh, are open. Uh, in the middle, um, there's a tile for each member of our team. Um, and it displays the, the tasks of the things they should be, uh, should be working on. And we have here uh, a tile that, um, that says if our sites are up, if any of our sites are down, then, the, then this tile will uh, become yellow and we will immediately see, hey, we should take a look at, at this site. And that is what is being displayed at our dashboard. The dashboard itself is also completely open source. In this repo on GitHub, you'll find the actual code that's uh, being deployed on our server. Uh, so yeah, feel free to, uh, to fork it. After this talk, you'll be able to set up and customize a dashboard of your own. Okay, let's get a little bit technical and start off with a high level overview. So in short, the dashboard is a single HTML page. It's being displayed full screen in a browser. And once we um, load that page, we will never reload it again, because otherwise you see it build up. And we want our dashboard to be very, very calm. We don't want to uh, attract much attention to it. That's why we don't reload it. So what do we do to uh, keep it up to date? Well. We, this, we um, update the dashboard with the JavaScript. And every tile um, yeah, has its own uh, update uh, frequency. So the packages tile, we update that once an hour, and yeah, the clock is being updated once a second. Which technologies uh, did we use for this? Laravel, Pusher, and Vue.js. That are the three big ones. Now, a quick show of hands. Who here has familiarity with uh, Laravel? Who uses that? Okay, quite some people. Nice. Pusher? Not so many. A few hands. And Vue.js? Okay, also a few hands. Now, if you don't know uh, Laravel, Pusher, or Vue.js, no problem. I'm going to take it slow so you can, uh, so you can follow. So, First one, Laravel. Um, it really needs no introduction these days anymore. I think everybody has at least heard of it. Um, it's a, yeah, a PHP uh, framework. Um, for this project, we use the latest version, which is Laravel 5.6. And uh, what it uh, must do in our project is it will um, render that initial page, and it also will fetch data from all the APIs that the dashboard uh, uses. So for uh, that list of events that's being displayed, we use a Google Calendar for that, so Laravel will, will reach out to the Google uh, Calendar API to fetch the data. For the, uh, the current music that's playing in our office, we use a service called LastFM for that, um, which, uh, yeah, uh, which has an API where you can uh, um, send uh, where you can let iTunes or Spotify send your current track to, and you have an API where you can fetch that back from. Laravel is also responsible in this project for broadcasting an event when new data arrives, and that event that's going to be picked up by the client side. Um, yeah. I've uh, already said a little bit about this, so yeah, we use a few APIs um, to get data. Um, I searched around for a few packages to work with uh, the Google Calendar API and with Twitter and with Last of Him, but I found none, so we created a few packages of our own. Um, and we also use the excellent uh, KNP Labs uh, GitHub API package to get uh, statistics out of GitHub. <laughs> 
Pusher. Uh, Pusher is a service, and they then the, describe themselves as a service that uh, provides full duplex communications channel over a single uh, TCP connection. Now, that's a mouthful. Uh, we tend to call this uh, web sockets, but I like to call it magic because <laughs> it is so fast and it is so reliable. And we use this to transport events from the server to the browser. So Laravel will uh, send uh, a signal to Pusher, and Pusher will send it uh, over to the client side. It happens in real time. It's really, really fast. Um, it does it also in a secure way, because um, there isn't really highly sensitive information being displayed on our dashboard, but the uh, current tasks each member of our team should be working on, we like that to be a little bit private. I should also mention that Pusher is a paid service, but they have a free tier where you can, I think, send 100,000 events a day for free. And the dashboard currently uses 4,000 events, so you're pretty good in the, in the, free, in the free tier. Sorry. Last technology, Vue.js. Vue.js is a very easy to pick up uh, JavaScript framework, and it makes it easy to uh, make uh, reusable components. Um, and in our dashboard, each tile that you see on the dashboard is its own uh, view component. Now, each, tiles, each tile will uh, listen for incoming events, and when it uh, sees an event coming in that is targeted at, at it, it will update itself with, uh, with the new information contained in the event. Now, this is it, uh, the, the whole flow in a little schema. So we have the external services on the left here. Laravel will uh, yeah, fetch new information. And when it has new information, it sends an HTTP request to Pusher. And Pusher will uh, um, send that out to the browser via WebSockets. That's in a, in a bird's eye view how the dashboard is working. Now, I can talk a lot about uh, this dashboard, but yeah, it's more fun that you yeah, get a little bit of a feel uh, of it. And yeah, I'd like to just demonstrate some code to you. Um, what are we going to cover? Uh, the grid system. How can we uh, position things on the dashboard? Spoiler, it's really easy. Um, we're going to uh, see how the clock tile works. That's for the people that don't know uh, Vue.js well. It's really a crash course into Vue. Uh, then we are going to see the, how the packages style works, because we are using uh, uh, the, um, the APIs then, and we see the, the entire flow. And then we'll have a little bit of fun with, uh, with the Twitter tile. So there will be some live coding there. Uh, we'll use uh, an internet connection. Lots of things can go wrong. People said to me, don't do this, but we're going to do it. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Moment of glory. Let's uh, minimize keynote here for a sec. And here, I hope you can see this all. Yeah. Uh, this is a local version of the dashboard, slightly adapted, that yeah, just runs on, uh, on my Mac here. And so you can see there's not a lot of information being displayed. We have just a, just a clock here. Now, let's switch over to PHP Storm. Is this readable in the back? Yeah, OK, cool. So. People that have uh, experience with Laravel, they immediately recognize, hey, this is the structure of a, of a Laravel application. Um, there's only one view in this uh, dashboard being used, namely yeah, the view that, uh, that, you, uh, that you see. And in Laravel, views live in the resources folder, views, dashboard. And we see, we see this. It's only, uh, yeah. It's, it's not much HTML here. You can see that we have some weird tags here going on. The, those are the view components. We'll dive into that later. What I want to show you first is that every tile here has a, has a position thing going on, E1 here for the time weather. You should think of the dashboard 
a little bit like an Excel spreadsheet where every row has a number and every column has, uh, has a letter. So if I put this in A1, this will go into uh, the, the top. Let me clear out all this garbage here first. Oh, did a little bit too much. Uh, only this should go. And this should go as well. So we have a very Spartan dashboard going on here. Let's switch to the browser. And sure enough, we have that clock here running. Now, if you want to, you can uh, make it a little bit bigger, your tile. The, the posi positioning system supports ranges. So if I want to make this a little bit wider, I just uh, put uh, the right range here. And you can see it's a little bit wider. What you can also do, of course, is if you want to have uh, yeah, multiple clocks, maybe uh, yeah, for some reason you want to display uh, another clock, you can put this on the, on the second row, another clock. Now, for, for a clock, this doesn't really make sense. But the, remember those uh, tasks being displayed by, for each member of our, our team? That's actually the same tile with just another uh, parameter on it. So yeah, you can see positioning things is very easy. Uh, if you want to have your dashboard have an, uh, an extra row or column, yeah, just add another one here, and you have, a, you have an extra row. So that's, uh, that's how that works. Cool? Yeah, yeah. We at uh, Spassi we have um, one employee who is in a in different time zone, and so uh, yeah, we display his time as well on it. So that's a good use case for multiple clocks. Um, okay, let's restore everything here. So we're back uh, back to the original dashboard here. Okay. Oh, still that positioning thing back. OK, let's take a look at how that, that clock works. So this is the, the little view crash course that I'm going to give. So I've said that yeah, we have some really funny uh, HTML tags here. Those are actual view components. View will scan uh, the DOM, and it will replace um, the HTML in the strange tags by the HTML that's defined into that component. So we have that time weather thing here going on. Let's take a look at uh, that component itself. Now in Laravel, all uh, JavaScript lives in resources, assets, JavaScript. And I've created a folder here called components. And you can see that for each style, we have a file here. Now let's take a look at that time weather component thing. And this is a, a view component. So in a component, um, uh, there can be three sections, namely a templating section where HTML lives. And this is the HTML that will actually be replaced, uh, or that will replace that, um, this tag here. We have a script section here where all the behavior of the component is. And we don't use it in this project, but you could also have a style section where you can put the CSS that this uh, component uses in. But uh, for this project, we've uh, done it in a little bit more traditional way where we have all the CSS in, uh, in separate files. Now, let's take a look at the HTML here. So this is what, what um, uh, what's, uh, will be um, this HTML will end up in the DOM eventually. And you can see here that we have yeah, a few uh, parameters here. We have here date and the time. And each view component has a, a thing in, in it called state. So that's the information where uh, that's most important for rendering um, this component. Um, if I go to the behavior here, then you can see here, yeah, the, the data function contains the initial values of, of, of that state of daytime. It's, it's yeah, an empty string. 
A view component also has a created method, which, we, which you can compare uh, to a constructor in a PHP class. And what are we going to do here? We are going to call a function called refresh time. Um, that function, refresh time, what's it going to do? It's going to use a popular um, JavaScript library called Moment to parse um, uh, dates and times. And it's going to uh, set the actual date and the actual time into that date and time um, state of this component. And what you should know is whenever you update the state of a component, the component will re-render itself. So as soon as I put another thing in the time variable here, the component will re-render. Now that refresh time method, we also uh, tell to, uh, to JavaScript, hey, run this function every second. So every second, that time um, variable and that, uh, yeah, that date and time variable are being updated, and that's how you get this uh, in the HTML. Now that's very basic uh, view things. I hope I've explained it a little bit uh, correctly. <coughs> okay, let's uh, delve a little bit deeper and take a look at the packages uh, component. Because that um, uh, date time component is just JavaScript, there isn't anything uh, server related going on. Okay, let's uh, close some folders and let's see how uh, the dashboard fetches the data from, uh, from packages. So, um, if you use Laravel, then you know that every uh, command is in the console folder here, and I've created a components folder here. And you can see that I have a subfolder here for each, um, uh, for each tile that fetches uh, uh, data from, from APIs. So I have got here a package, um, a packages uh, task called fetch totals. Now again, if you use Laravel, you immediately recognize, hey, this is a command. I can run it from um, um, from the terminal like this. But you can also schedule those components. I've said that uh, that the dashboard will fetch. Um, data periodically. We just use Laravel's built-in um, scheduler for that. And in Laravel, you can schedule commands in the, in the so-called console kernel. And this is that kernel. And when I scroll a little bit down, you can see here that we have a schedule command. And for the uh, fetch packages total, you can see here that Laravel will just um, execute this every hour. And that's how we, uh, yeah, automatically fetch a new data. Now, let's go to um, the packages task itself. What do we do here? Um, yeah, we uh, spin up a new um, instance of our packages uh, API. And then we are going to do some mumbo jumbo here to uh, fetch all the um, statistics of our packages. And we are going to sum it up. And the most important bit is that the, uh, the total daily downloads, monthly downloads, and total downloads, um, they will be returned as an array in this totals variable. So here we have uh, an array with these keys in it. How are we going to transport it to, to Pusher? Well, Laravel has a built-in system for that as well. You can say in Laravel, hey, fire off this event and broadcast it to uh, the, the broadcasting service that's being configured. Now, that broadcasting service for this project is it's Pusher. Let's see how we can fire off an event to Pusher. So it's very easy. We have a helper function called event. And we have a class here, totals fetched, which represents that event. And we pass it that totals variable. If I uh, open up that event here, you can see here that uh, that's a simple class. And what we do here in the constructor is, yeah, we get that array. And then we set every key in that array to a public property on that class. Why do we do that? Because in Laravel, if you are going to broadcast 
an event, then the data being broadcasted, uh, that are the, the public properties. So Laravel will just see, hey, these are the public properties of the event class, I'm going to broadcast that. That's why we yeah, put the public uh, properties here. Now, if I delve a little bit deeper here, you can see here that the uh, uh, total fetched class extends the dashboard event class. And if I open up that, then you can see here that this uh, class implements an interface called should broadcast. And should broadcast, that's the hint that you give to Laravel, hey, this event should really be broadcasted. It also has a single method called broadcast on, and we use a private channel called dashboard. Now, pusher, you can, um, you can use different channels to, to uh, push things uh, to pusher. It's a little bit like a radio. I transmit something on this channel, and um, only the ones listening on that channel will, uh, will receive it. Um, we're using one single channel in this uh, project called, uh, called Dashboard. Okay. Um, before uh, heading over to the client side uh, to see how we um, capture that event, let's just see that it's actually working, this part. Okay, so if I uh, go to, to Chrome again, um, you can see here that we have uh, uh, zeros here all around. I have also here opened a second tab on the pusher service. Let me clear this out. This is the debug console of uh, Pusher. It shows uh, everything that um, uh, Pusher receives from our Laravel application and what information is being pushed. Okay. Um, I'm in the wrong directory here. It should be dashboard demo. Sorry about that. Um, if I just run that command, manually now that you've seen. It's called uh, fetch packages totals. Let's run it. Ah, uh, I should explain this. I have uh, a command A here, and that's just uh, alias to PHP artisan so that I don't have to type that uh, the whole time. Uh, so A dashboard fetch packages totals. And with any luck, we should see some uh, numbers popping here up, and yeah, this is the live count of, uh, of our packages uh, stats. So it has worked. And if I go to Pusher here, you can see here that there was uh, an event on the private dashboard channel. And the event was totals fetched. And this data was being transferred. Now that stars thing, yeah, that sucks a little bit. That's from a previous version. I should, should clean that up. <coughs> so don't mind that. But you see that uh, yeah, the public properties of that event are being transmitted. OK, let's take a look at the client side, at how we um, catch the event. So that's back into the resources folder, assets, JavaScript, components. And we have a packages component here. It's a view component. So it uh, also has that HTML section and it has that behavior section, a little bit of JavaScript going on here. And you can see here that we have that daily, monthly, total thing here, uh, here going on. And if I go here into the behavior of it, there are a few methods in it. And one is get event handlers. And one of the event handlers here is packages totals fetched. So this function will be executed whenever we see this event coming in. And that function gets a response. And what are we going to do? We are going to take off the daily, monthly, and total variables of the response, and we'll put it into the internal state of the component. And remember, whenever we update the internal state of the component, the component will re-render itself. And that's why you see these numbers uh, coming in. Okay. Um, let's delve a little bit deeper into that get event handlers function. How does it work? And this, if you don't uh, know your way around JavaScript very well, it might prove a little bit tricky. But if you don't understand uh, the things, that's 
that's, uh, that's no problem at all. We won't build further upon it. Um, so, how uh, does this work? I should first say that there is a special key on this view component called mix-ins. And a mix-in is very comparable to a trait in, in PHP. You put a few functions in there that you want to have multiple classes, or in this case, components use. So in the echo mix-in, everything uh, with pusher handling uh, is, is being defined. Now, why is it called echo? Because under the hood, it uses another framework called Laravel echo, which is a framework to easily uh, handle uh, web, sec uh, web socket connections. Let's take a look at that echo mixin. So this is the contents of that mixin, and you can see that it only has that created uh, method here. So this created method, it's being applied to uh, yeah, the, uh, the packages component. And what does it do? So whenever this component is created, we will um, execute the function get event handlers, which is this function. And what will it do? It will register the what's being returned from get event handlers with the echo instance on the root application. So here we use Laravel Echo itself, and here you can see we listen to the private channel, and whenever an event name comes in, which is this, this part, we are going to give the response to the handler and execute, uh, and execute that. So this function will be executed. So that's what we do here. So when the the component is created, we are just registering everything this uh, method returns with Laravel Echo. So that's a little bit deep. If you have some questions about this, just yeah, hit me up uh, after the talk and I'll explain it to you a little bit more. But that's how we um, yeah, handle things coming in from, uh, from the webhooks. Okay, let's do one more thing. Um, let's have a little bit of fun with a Twitter tile. Um, so, um, actually, let's do one one other thing first. Now that I'm in the packages component, um, I've said that all data is coming in via the web sockets. So, what do you think would happen if I just refresh the dashboard? It will have no contents, right? Because there are no events coming in. But if I refresh here, you can see these numbers stay. And how is that working? Because every time an event comes in and we change the state of it, we are going to write a copy of the state to uh, local storage. And whenever we re reload the dashboard, we are just reading the local storage to set up the internal state of the component. So if I go to the uh, application here, the local storage one, you can see here the packages, here are the numbers that are in there. If I remove that, then we have no numbers anymore. Um, how does that work internally? It's also a mix-in because uh, remember, I've said mixin is a little bit like a trait, so we use this mixin uh, for every component that we want to uh, let let it save its state. And I'm not going to go fully in this, but in uh, view you can define a watcher, uh, and which is a function that will be executed whenever uh, a certain key in our state is uh, is changed, and here we say, yeah, just call this whenever the state changes. We are going to call save state, and let me close this up. Save state is here a function that just uh, yeah gets our uh, our internal state and saves it to the uh, to local storage, and this mixin also um, will add a function. 
at the created, uh, at created level. So whenever the component is created, we are going to call load state, and we're just going to get the saved state and set it into the internal data of the component itself. So that's how that's working. If you want to have safe state behavior to, to your view components, I'm happy to say that we've extracted that mix into its own package, so you can yeah, use it in your own projects. Uh, the package is called view safe state. So that's how that works. Okay, let's have a little bit of fun with uh, the, the Twitter component here. So the Twitter component is a little bit special one. It leverages uh, the Twitter streaming APIs. So Twitter um, um, exposes a few real-time APIs where you can listen for every event that's, that's happening on Twitter. Um, you can really crash your machine with this if you uh, listen for popular subjects. Uh, then you get like uh, a million events coming in and your computer will, or your, your process uh, at least will, will just crash. Now, handling the Twitter real-time uh, streams is a little bit nasty in PHP. That's why I uh, created a package above it to make it, uh, to make it easier to work with. And here you can see that we are using the Twitter streaming API. We're going to listen to the public stream, which are all events. And when we hear one of those keywords here, we are going to send an event called mentioned with the properties of that, of that tweet. And remember, when uh, we fire off that event, then that whole dance with Pusher will start over again. Uh, the information will be broadcast to Pusher. The dashboard tile will listen for it and will display it. Now, normally we use our, uh, yeah, our company name here to listen for it, but I think it might be fun if we just do PHP UK conference here. And I hope that some of you are subscribed to Twitter and can send a few tweets so we can test this. This is the, the handle of the conference, right? PHP UK conference. And let's open the floodgates. So I'm going to start listening for, uh, for things here. And now I await your tweets, and I hope this will, this will work, and yeah. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> so you can have your moment of glory now on the dashboard. Very good, Morten. <laughs> and uh, yeah, those trying it out, they will see that it's really instant. Probably your tweet will be faster on our dashboard than, than the application on your smartphone will confirm that, uh, that it is there. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how that works. And you can see it's, it's really not that, uh, that hard to do. Cool. I'm on the dashboard, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should leave this open for, uh, for a little bit. Well, I've done that at a few conferences, and then it got a little bit nasty, uh, so <laughs> then I had to cheat it down. Um, okay. That's everything I had technical to say about the dashboard. Let's go back to, um, to the presentation. So I'm quite happy that that, that worked a little bit. Now, one thing that I want to touch upon is um, how we are displaying this on, uh, on a TV set uh, in, our, uh, in our office. Well, behind our TV screen, there lives a, a little Raspberry Pi, and it's quite cool because um, it, um, it, is, it is powered by the USB port of the TV itself, so you don't need any extra, uh, extra power cord for that. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is, is, uh, is a Raspberry Pi 2. Um, uh, it uses Raspbian Jesse, which is the default operating system. And when it boots up, it uh, will just so show you uh, Chromium 56, and it will go into uh, full screen mode. Now, this is a very exciting um, part of the presentation for me. I have here a clone of our dashboard on this Raspberry Pi. This Raspberry Pi gets its internet connection from my Mac. Um, we will hopefully see the output soon on the, on the TV screen. Um, and it also will get its power from, from my Mac. So if I 
pull it in. I put it in. It should boot up and just yeah show you the dashboard after it has booted up. So I hope we can switch to our uh, our little Raspberry Raspberry Pi. Okay, here it is, booting up. That's uh, that's the boot sequence. Fingers crossed here. Everything is good here. So it will uh, uh, power up its, uh, its graphical user interface. And you'll see that Chrome will display once, and you'll see it having a nasty restore tabs uh, dialog. I don't know how to remove it. So I just quit Chrome again and boot it up again. <laughs> So that's, uh, that's how I do it. So it's gone now, and now we do it again. Ah, damn, and it didn't work. It still is there. Sometimes it does that. But hopefully the dashboard will, uh, will at least come on. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the dashboard. That's the, the actual dashboard uh, now. So if you treat something too, too sparsy, it will, uh, it will come there. So that's, um, that's that. Uh, OK. Let's power that down again. And um, we're back at the slides, hopefully. Okay, cool. So you can try out uh, this dashboard yourself. I have already uh, mentioned that um, yeah, the source code is publicly available on, uh, on GitHub. I've also written uh, quite an extensive blog post uh, about this where I say mostly the same things that I've said during this talk, but I explain a few other uh, components. Um, now, I've been babbling about this dashboard the whole time, so you might think, hey, this guy really knows his stuff. But um, the truth is that, uh, like most things that we do in our company, it was teamwork. And um, uh, the other team members involved in this project were my colleague Willem, which is re who is responsible for the, the great looks of the dashboards. He, uh, he designed uh, the, the looks. And my uh, colleague Sebastian, yeah, he uh, scrutinized all my crap and made uh, the JavaScript code mo uh, look much, much nicer. Um, here are a few more packages that are of interest. Um, I've demonstrated these dashboards um, with Pusher, but you can actually use a local node server on your machine if you don't like using a service like Pusher. And the Laravel Echo server package, it will just mimic uh, Pusher um, on, on, your, on your server, so you don't need to, uh, to install Pusher. And it works really, really great. And I've touched upon our view safe state thing to uh, easily save state from, uh, from your view components. So that's all I had to say about uh, this dashboard. Um, I really want to improve this talk a little bit, so please, please give me feedback, uh, good or bad, on, uh, on JointIn. I've also uh, uploaded uh, the slides there. Oh, it's, uh, it's the wrong URL, but I'll tweet out uh, the right uh, URL later. Also, um, yeah, take a look at our company website. Probably we have made something, a package that can be used uh, for, uh, for use of you in, uh, in the next project. Uh, yeah, take a look at my blog if you want to stay current with PHP. And uh, yeah, try out Odir if you need a monitoring solution. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>